Wow, where's the lights? I was ready for them. <laughs> oh, we're not playing the brownout game like we did last time where the lights went out. That's, we're not doing that. Hey, if somebody in the back there could go back and close those doors for me, I'd really appreciate it. What a great time at camp. Middle school students had a, had a wonderful week. So appreciative of all those that gave of their time and their investment, uh, sacrifice to be there with those students. I don't know what's up with all that color stuff, but that just looks messy. <laughs> but they sure like it. They sure like it. And uh, we continue to see just great things happening in our next generation, our students and our kids. And it's just so cool uh, to see God moving in their lives. Great to celebrate a baptism today as well. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not Jesse Bradley. Uh, my name is Mark Edwards. I'm the executive pastor here, and it's my privilege to, uh, to be here to share with you today. Uh, pastor Jesse is taking a break today. I think, I believe, that it's soccer related with his kids. I think there's a lot going on there. And so, uh, just an honor to be here and to share with you. We're going to be in the book of Psalms, as we have been all summer, a time of refreshment through the Psalms. Uh, we're going to be in one, basically 140 through 143 today. Pretty excited about that. We have a lot coming up in September. The students and the kids are moving up on the 10th. We've got a men's breakfast on the 16th. Uh, we've got a volunteer appreciation on the 9th. If you haven't heard about it, if you serve here in any capacity, you're welcome to come. Uh, Saturday the 9th uh, at 10 o'clock will be a, just a gathering of, just to celebrate you and to celebrate all that God's doing through you and the lives that have been changed because of you. And so that'll be coming up as well. Okay, you're there, you're ready to go. I don't know if I am, but we're gonna pray. Let's do that. Father, thank you so much. We come before you today uh, anticipating, welcoming your presence, anticipating the change that you have for us. Father, we uh, pray against the distractions that may come, and we wanna just uh, be receptive to all that you have for us this morning. Uh, we commit this time to you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're gonna be in the book of Psalms. Now, this isn't where I plan to be. Uh, the, the, the short of it is uh, I found a verse that I thought meant one thing and it meant something else. Uh, and then through that discovery, I realized that God wanted us to spend some time here in, in, these, in these chapters. Uh, they don't maybe will seem real refreshing at first, but I, I pray that as we get through this message uh, that it will be a refreshment to you uh, as we begin to wrap up uh, this summer series, we've got one, one more week. Uh, these Psalms were written by King David. Uh, David is that uh, shepherd boy who took down Goliath, grew up to be the king of Israel, anointed by God to lead uh, his people. And the book of Psalms is pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much in the middle of the Bible. And it's, I think there's a reason it's in the middle of the Bible. Uh, it's at the heart of, of scripture in terms of the heart of who who God made us to be, the experiences we have. Uh, leaders, uh, historians, scholars have said it this way. Martin Luther said, uh, the book of Psalms is a little book for all the saints. Calvin said, the anatomy of, of all parts of the soul are reflected in the book of Psalms. David wrote nearly half of all the Psalms. And um, the Psalms is quoted more in the New Testament than any other Old Testament scriptures. So the Psalms have great meaning and great impact. Jesus himself quoted Psalms even when he was on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was right out of the book of Psalms, quoting that scripture. And it gave us a, a look at a feeling and an experience even for Christ of like, this is where I'm at and, and this is what I'm going through. And the Psalms just really bring us, uh, can bring us to a place of where we are, how we're feeling, the book of Psalms can reflect that. And so there's every emotion and every circumstance I think reflected and played, played out in Psalms. And so today we're gonna be in 40 through, 140 through 143. These are some, uh, these are some intense Psalms that David wrote. Uh, David was an intense man, I'm convinced of it. He experienced a lot of things in his life uh, a lot of celebrations, a lot of tragedy, a lot of personal struggle. And in it all, I just keep going back to the scripture that says, David was a man after God's own heart. And I pray today, as we dive into uh, a portion of David's life that he so eloquently wrote out of his struggle, that you and I would be reminded today that it's not only in our celebrations, in, our, in, our, in our, the times that we rejoice, but it's in our difficulties and it's in our tragedies and it's in our pain where God shows up 
And he says, this is the heart of a man or a woman that I just desire to invest in and just, just want to pursue me and I want to pursue them. And so this is, this is who we hear from today, from David, a man who is seeking God. And uh, we're going to keep it simple today. We're going to keep it really simple. So if, if, you're on a, if you actually have a Bible, we're going to be flipping around through a few, a few of the Psalms. If you have an electronic device, you're going to be really having fun with this, <laughs> flipping back and forth from chapters. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I just want to challenge us today. I want to challenge you today that whether you've been in a situation that's been difficult or you're in one or you're going to have one coming at some point, it's just inevitable that you do one thing that reflects these four things we're going to talk about. You got to know that God waits for us to say, help. He waits for us to say help. Now, he's with us. He doesn't like just go like, okay, I'm not even helping you. I'm not gonna be there for you unless you cry out help. But today, as we cry out help in our circumstances, I, I would want us to focus on the fact that God is there and he, he's waiting to do something great in you and through you in your difficulties that will bring refreshment to your soul. And so we're gonna, do, we're gonna talk about four, four characteristics, four um, feelings for components of what it means to be in a place to, res- to, to cry out for God for help and to be ready for the response. There's four things we need to be based on what David wrote, I believe, that help us be ready for what happens next after we say help to God. All right, the first one's this. They're pretty simple. I'm a pretty simple guy. The first point that I would really want you to know when it comes to crying out to God for help and his response, be ready. First of all, be authentic. Be authentic. When you go to God with, I need your help, just be real, be authentic. Psalm 139, I kind of threw you a curveball. The last couple verses of 139 say this, David wrote, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. You ever felt anxious? I feel anxious right now. (laughs) I felt anxious all morning. I haven't been able to figure it out, but I know God knows why I'm so anxious this morning. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Be authentic. David is all about being real and authentic to God. I mean, we could skip ahead to like 145 to 150, those last handful of Psalms. Like those are the best. He's just celebrating. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. They all start that way. I mean, those are awesome. We're not gonna spend any time there today. You should this week. You really should. Because it's a great dynamic, a great balance of where God wants to take us out of a time where we're crying out for help. Be authentic. Psalm 141, verses one and two. David writes this. Oh Lord, I call to you, come quickly to me. Hear my voice when I call you. May my prayer be set before you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Be authentic. Go before God and say, I need you. I need you. Come to me quickly. I'm not willing to wait. I'm like, I'm ready now. I'm I'm just being authentic, God. I need you now. Psalm 142, verses one through six. I cry aloud to the Lord. If you're on your device, you're getting there. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him. Before him, I tell my trouble. Verse three, when my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. Look to my right and see, no one is concerned for me. I have no refuge, no one cares for my life. I cry to you, O Lord, I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. David's going through a real difficult time, and he's being really authentic. Like, I'm not gonna try to impress you on how this passage, these Psalms reflect other Old Testament, you know, times of when David was king and when he was running from Saul and when he was in a cave. I'm just not going to go there. I want to keep it super simple today. I want to keep it super simple. When we cry out for help, 
it's time to be authentic before God, just like David was. Psalm 143, verse 1. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. I'm just being real, God. I'm just being authentic. I need your help. This is where I'm at. This is, I just know you're gonna show up. I need you to show up. I am struggling to start with being authentic. The authenticity that comes from you and I comes when we acknowledge how great God is and how small we are. When we acknowledge and say, God, I, 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 maybe, it's, maybe you have created your situation that you're in right now. Or you can think of one when you did. Like your decisions, your actions, your selfishness, your sin, your pride, whatever it may be, has put you in a position where the only thing left to do should have been the first thing you should have done is that's to cry out to God for help. So be authentic. God, I should have came sooner. I am really hurting. There's stuff around me going on and I just, I need you. Be authentic. Number two, be truthful. When you come out, come to God for help, be truthful. Like he knows you. He knows what you're going through. He knows where you stumbled. He knows the mess you made. He loves you. He wants to participate in a relationship with you. The best relationships we could ever experience are ones where we're authentic and we're truthful. We're truthful. I mean, think of the person, if you have somebody really close in your life, maybe they're sitting beside you, you're married to them, they're like your best friend, right? They know everything about you. Or it's somebody that you work with, or somebody in your neighborhood. Somewhere along the line, you have someone like a Sue Little. You have someone who just, you can, they, you just, you're, you go deep with, right? They can tell when you're not being truthful. God knows. God knows. Be truthful with your feelings, your perspective of your situation. Tell God how you feel. There's nothing better to sit with someone that when you're getting a truthful conversation with them, you're receiving truth. You're receiving, like somebody's just sharing with you what they're going through, and they're not sugarcoating it. They're just, this is, what, this is what's going on. This is what I've done. God says, David demonstrates, be truthful. Psalm 140, verses four and five. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from, my, from men of violence who plan to trip my feet. Proud men have hidden a snare for me. They've spread out the cords of their net and have set traps for me along, their, along the path, my path. Be truthful. This is my condition. This is what I'm dealing with. I can't deal with this on my own. I don't know where to turn. Psalm 141, verses three and four. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. David saying, God, help me with my voice, with my speech, with what I'm saying. Guard my words. I don't know, have your, have your words ever gotten you in trouble? <laughs> they have for me. And there's very rarely a time when I don't say what, when I say what I shouldn't. And I don't stop myself. How about you? You've been in a situation where you wish you could take it back? <laughs> yeah. David's going before God saying, listen, I need you to guard my mouth. Protect me. Watch over the door of my lips. Verse four, let not my heart be drawn to what is evil to take part in wicked deeds with men who are evildoers. Let me not eat of their delicacies. David's being real. He's being truthful. God, I've got issues. I've got issues with my mouth and I got issues with my heart. And when something looks good, feels good, but I know it's wrong, I want to do it. I want to experience it. The enemy is real, and I'm doing battle with him. And David's saying, I need your help. This is who I am. Just to be truthful, God, like if, if it looks this way and acts this way, I want it. And so when it shows up that way, I need your help to protect me from it because I know it's a path to destruction. There, I'm telling you, I'm sharing with you. I'm just being real. Like there's times in my life and I know it's been in yours when you knew what it was, you knew you shouldn't, 
You knew you should run away from it. It wasn't what God wanted for you, and you did it anyway. It's just, it's the human condition. It's not an excuse, it's just reality. We live in a broken world, and we're broken people. We're not perfect. God is, and God loves us unconditionally. And David goes before him and says, this is who I am, truthfully, this is who I am. You know I'm just, just junk. I'm broken. I'm human. And to be truthful, I can't do it without you because I will be susceptible to all the things that this world will throw at me. Temptation and weakness. I'm confessing to you and being truthful with you right now, God, I need you. Psalm 142, verses three and four. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. We read that before, right? It's, it's that reality of truthfully, God, these snares are out there and they, and they are gonna draw me in. Be truthful. When you cry out for help for God, be authentic, be truthful. And three, be receptive. Be receptive. Sometimes we cry out for help and we just want a quick fix and then we want to move on. I, God, I, I'm convinced God doesn't, doesn't operate that way. When, when he comes to save us, when he comes to be our hero, when he comes to, to pull us out of the depths of, depths of our despair, our circumstances, and he comes to save us, just like he did in the beginning when he sent Jesus to save us in our current conditions where we're crying out for help, there is a plan beyond just fixing it. And, and you gotta know, saving you in your situation doesn't mean there's not consequences for your choices. But God doesn't leave us on our own for that either. But we've gotta be receptive. Wow, this is not the message I preached last service. <laughs> be receptive, Psalm 140, verse six. I don't know where it comes from. Oh, Lord, I say to you, you are my God. Hear, oh, Lord, my cry for mercy. Mercy, I need you. I need you. I'm receiving. I'm receptive. Psalm 141, the beginning of verse 5. Let a righteous man strike me. It is, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it. Like I need correction. I'm receptive to correction. No thanks. Sometimes we don't want to be corrected. David's at a point where he needs correction. He needs correction. He's receptive to it. When we're crying out for help in that way and, and we're ready to receive, oh, buckle up because you got to be paying attention to what's next. Psalm 143, starting with verse 7. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Doesn't that sound like desperation? I need a quick response. My, have you ever felt your spirit failing you? Have you ever felt in such despair that there is absolutely nothing left for you to do? What's great about coming out of a situation like that is if we're receptive, what's next is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing for us, for the life we live. Verse eight, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have not put, for I put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go. For to you, I lift up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. There is refreshment that comes as we cry out for help and we're receptive to what he has for us. There is, it's like a big tall glass of cold water on a really hot King County day, <laughs> right? And when we're ready for that, when we're receptive, when we're truthful and we're authentic, we get to that point of like, okay, God, I need you desperately, and I am ready to receive whatever it is. I'm past trying to figure it out. I have met people in the mirror and others that want to figure it out. They want the answers first before they receive it, right? Well, how's that going to go? Well, I think I better wait. 
because I better figure it out first. And we finally get to a point when we're crying out for help and the only thing, the only thing we want is what God wants. And we're receptive to that. We don't even care what it, we don't even care what it looks like. We don't even have a clue what it's gonna look like, but we know it's gonna be good because where you're at is so bad. So pay attention, pay attention. When you're at a point of being receptive, when you're at that point of receiving, it's not gonna look what you think it should look like, probably. Because God doesn't act and function the way we would like him to a lot of times. We'd like it just kind of delivered to our door quickly because we're, we're prime customers and Amazon delivers almost the same day and we want God to show up that way. Right? It comes right to our doorstep, and all we got to do is reach out and grab it. It's right there. Mm-mm. Sometimes we're blessed to have it be that way, and then other times we have to wait for it and wait for it and double check and make sure we asked for it and make sure we were ready. Did I give you the right address? Like, what's up? I'm ready. I'm receptive. Well, I would say this. When you're crying out for help, the natural response is gonna be to want it a certain way, but if we're ready and you're receptive, you'll see it. God doesn't want you to, he's not gonna keep it hidden from you. And it may not be what you think it should be, but I guarantee you it'll be what you need and what's best for you. I guarantee it. Be authentic, be truthful, be receptive. And when you cry out for help, there's one thing you really need to do, be ready for but you need to be obedient. Be obedient. Psalm 141, verse eight, starts out like this. But my eyes are fixed on you, O sovereign Lord. I am ready, I'm receptive, I'm fixed on you. Psalm 143, the very end of verse 12. This is the, this is the kicker. Try to sneak that in. That was not good. <laughs> Paul, Paul, David says this, I am your servant. So it's going from, I need your help. This is where I'm at. This is what's going on. I'm writing it over and over again because my situation is pretty intense and I really like to journal. So I'm just telling you, God, over and over again how much I need you. Boy, I wish I journaled like, Paul, like David did. <clears throat> that's what I look at this as like as his journal, like his personal journal. I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. And I'm ready to obey. I am your servant. I will do your will. It may not make sense in the moment. It may not feel right. But the reason, the way I'm gonna know that it's from you isn't just because it feels right. It's because it aligns really well with scripture. There are so many times when we're asking for help and we're crying out for help and we think we're ready and all da da da. And then it's also, it's like, well, I feel like the answer is this. This is what God wants me to do. Friends, this is so important to utilize, I think, the greatest thing second to Jesus God ever gave us and that's his word. And this is, where, this is where the tension falls for you and I. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm sitting talking to a room full of people that dive into this every day and like it's like it's all, you're all about the scripture every day all the time. Not me. I struggle sometimes. How about you? How about you? But doing what the Bible says should align. What, what we think God wants us to do will align with what his word says. It will And when we cry out for help and we're being authentic and we're speaking the truth unto God of where we're at and what our condition is and we tell him we're ready, you gotta know when we say I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm your servant, I will obey you, what God's gonna do, he's never gonna create confusion. He's gonna always align with the word that we're so blessed to have. David didn't have all this. (laughs) I don't know how much of this he had, but he didn't have all of it. He just had this first part, I guess, somewhere over here. 
It was fun in your first service. But <laughs> we are blessed with God's word. Amen. We are blessed with being able to go, wait a minute, why am I going through such hard times? Is this something, did I deserve this? Did I earn this? Is this something I did? Am I being punished? What am I being punished for? No, you may not necessarily be be punished for your actions. This world's just rough on its best day. This world is a tough place to be. Well, then why am I going through such hard times? Well, that's the question. Like Paul, like for David... I've said Paul instead of David. Now, I'm into double digits between two services. It's because I want to talk about Paul and what he wrote in Romans, and that's where where we're going to go to wrap this up. But our struggles and our challenges, like, you got to know, there's a, God's got a purpose for them. We can try to figure out if we deserved them. The ones that are easy are the ones we know we created, right? It's the ones that, that don't, and I know what those feel like. When these things come out of left field and they hit you like a ton of bricks, and you're like, why? You ever had a why moment? Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't cause this. Did I cause this? I didn't do this. How, how, why am I in the midst of this crisis that I, I don't think I had anything to do with? Well, what did I ever do to you? I've, I've looked at people and in my head, like, what have I ever done to you for you to act that way to me? Have I really done something that bad to you? Did I really have to deal with this situation? We can spend our time camping there and trying to figure that out, or we can say, okay, wait, God, what is it that you have for me through this in preparation for what's next and in the life that you have purpose for me now before I'm with you for forever if we know Jesus as Lord and Savior? And there's some basic things that I'm realizing that I need to stay true to in my life. And I want to relate them to you because I think what I know is, is if we stay true to the foundational principles that God lays out in scripture of how we're to live, we will benefit spiritually, emotionally, in all aspects, relationally of our life, because we stay true to that, regardless of our circumstances. Ready for my story? Time for story time. Okay. Let me see if I can connect the dots for you in 10 minutes. So for the longest time, I've struggled with a little bit of some lower back issues. How many of you have lower back issues? We can start a support group. (laughs) Now, I know it may be hard to believe, but I'm 59 years old, right? So this body's gone through a few things. I've fallen from trees as a kid. I've fallen off ladders. I've done lifted things I shouldn't have lifted in ways I shouldn't have. Like my back has taken a lot, as many of us have if you're my age or older, maybe younger, right? It's deteriorating. My body's, my back, part of my back is deteriorating. It's just, it's wearing out. Our bodies are wearing out. I've neglected it. I haven't done the things I know I should have done early on to eat right, exercise, all those things that we all know are the right things to do, right? So I go to see my chiropractor and He takes x-rays and he starts to work through some things with me. And then he says to me, I didn't really realize the impact of this, but he says to me, you know, I think I'm going to send you to a physical therapist. Anybody a physical therapist in the room? Are you? you? You represent an amazing profession that makes an amazing difference. Now, I don't like my physical therapist very much yet, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, the only time I'd been to physical therapy is I'd hurt my hand, and, and they really treat the hand a lot differently than they treat the back. They, they, put it, they put it in this, like, warm little box with warm sand, and they massage it, and there's this little exercise. It's beautiful. <laughs> but when it's your back, oh, baby, it's a whole nother, a whole nother story. It's a whole nother program, right? And I didn't know this. So I go to the physical therapist a couple weeks ago. This is what I'm dealing with right now. This is why it matters for today, I think. I go to the physical therapist, and he, you know, he starts to ask me questions. Why my back hurts? What's going on? How, you know, can you kind of describe it? I said, well, hmm, this is what's happening. He goes, okay, all right. 
well, we're gonna, I'm going to send you home with some exercises, which he didn't, but that's another story. I'm kind of glad he didn't. He goes, and then we're going to start seeing each other a couple days a week for six weeks. Now, let me just pause right there. How many of you have time to add two appointments into your schedule for six weeks in a row, right? But I got to a point where my discomfort was so to a point where I needed to do something. And I trusted my doctor to send me to the physical therapist who I wasn't quite sure if I really was going to get along with, but I trusted him. So I said, okay. So he goes, I want you to go up front and make your appointments before you leave. Great commitment. Love that. So I go up there, pull my phone, I, I line out 12 appointments over six weeks, two a week. I don't know how God helped me fit them in my schedule, but they're in there. And I've gone twice. And I've done my exercises at home. Now, here's the deal. Now, when I think of physical therapy, I didn't know what I was going to expect. Like, I just think weightlifting, running, I don't know. But that's not what it is, is it, you physical <laughs> therapist, you? No. No, they make you realize that there's some real fundamental things that you've neglected for a long time, and if you'd been doing them, you wouldn't be seeing me right now. They don't say that, but you come to that conclusion when they ask you to stretch, and you realize you can't touch your toes anymore without bending your knees. I know I'm a little emotional about it. I've never sweat so much doing so little in my entire life as going to the physical therapist. Like, I'm doing things, I don't even remember the names. They got weird names for, move, move, for motion and stuff. But like, I'm crossing my legs, I'm bending my knee. I'm like, this really hurts. And I'm doing it on the back. And then he looks at me, he looks at me. The second appointment, I'm getting ahead. He looks at me, he goes, uh, I put you down there, but I'm not helping you up. Because he wants me to work my core, right? So I've gone twice. Now, the first time I went, first time, 40 minutes of sheer agony and sweat over stretches. That was all I did. I did all these different stretches, right? And so I get up and I'm like, well, they say, well, see you, see you in you know, a few days. Like, okay, whatever. And I walk out to the, my truck and I'm walking. I'm like, I can't believe I did this. Like, all I did was stretch and I, I left sweat on the floor. Like, who am I? And I'm walking in my truck and I realize my back doesn't hurt. You are amazing. <laughs> She's not my physical therapist, but I'm just, this was amazing. How could I do so little, hurt so much? And now, at least for the moment, I kind of have any back pain. Like, okay, I'll go home and do my stretches when I get home tomorrow. tomorrow. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all excited, kind of. <laughs> kind of. But what, is that not a, a, a parallel to, who, to our spiritual life? Yes. Like, we know what we're supposed to do. It's fundamental. Yep. It's fundamental. Yep. God gave us his word. Yes, he, did. he didn't hide it. Right. It's the most printed book in all of history. It's translated so many different ways. I mean, it's there. And we do we utilize it? Do we spend time in it? If we don't, what happens? Spiritually, we deteriorate. Yep. Spiritually, we get disconnected from God. Like, we know we've been saved. Like, Jesus died for me. He died for you. He gave up his life. He, he, a relationship with him, forgiven, forgiveness of sin, in relationship with him as Lord and Savior, eternity in heaven, never separated from God, ever. How about that? But whether I'm in it or not doesn't change the conditions of the world I live in. But if I'm in the word and I'm spending time with him, and I'm praying, and I'm seeking God's direction, and I'm in the word, and then when I cry out for help in situations that are gonna come, some of them we create ourselves, some of them show up on their own, but God helps us. It's a different response. My back is acting differently today than what I thought it was going to two weeks ago. It's awesome. But that doesn't mean I get to skip the next 10 appointments. Just because I got in the word today and I, I, I'm seeking the Lord and like revelation today doesn't mean I get to put it down. I can. Fundamentals, foundational principles. That's how it works. 
problems and troubles are gonna come. Jesus said it. In this world, you'll have troubles. Take heart, I've come to overcome the world. Right? So for you and I, we're struggling with things, aren't we? Like, I know a few, and, I, and, and we're really good at keeping them to ourselves. We need people. We need accountability. Most importantly, we need to be in God's word, seeking his help. See, I'm convinced that it's, it's like things get really bad. It's, that's the condition. Then we turn to God. Things are pretty decent. We got it under control. It's not so bad. We're doing all right. Doesn't mean we shouldn't stay close to the Lord in those times too, right? right. God's word, mm-hmm. being in the word. And, and, I, and I, was trying, I was trying to think to myself, like, how do I take, God, how do I take these Psalms of David that are so like, oh, you are really hurting, man. Like David's just struggling, right? He's in so much anguish and torture and pain. How is that refreshing? Let me, let's see if we can land the plane with this. And I, I pray it'll be refreshing to you. There is that fun, foundational, fundamental stuff that you and I need to do, pursuing God in his word, in prayer, living out the life that, you know, desiring to live out the life he's got planned for us. And then it hit me. And you know how it hit me? Oh, figure this one out. Surprise, surprise. In my devotional time. Hmm. Funny how that works. I'm in Romans. Romans is a great book. I've been there a few times. But I hit hit a passage of scripture that um, it makes all the sense to me now. Why we go through what we go through in this world because it's broken, it's corrupt, it's sinful, like it's all there. But what I experience isn't about me. I didn't create it. I didn't create the world we're in. I've made choices and I make them regularly that I wish I wouldn't make. But there are a lot of things that we just deal with in this world. We deal with personal stuff. We deal with anxiety. We deal with depression. We deal with the, 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 the culture that we live in. We deal with the sin of this world. We deal with the enemy of our soul that reigns and rules in this world, right? We have to address that every day, every day. And it starts how we address it with knowing Jesus. If you're not here, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus is ready to receive you. He is ready to step into your life and be your Lord and Savior. He loves you unconditionally. There's no perfect person except him. There's no judgment. He doesn't say, fix this before you can hang out with me. He just says, I want you. I love you. I'll never stop loving you. I want to be with you. Some of those words, some of us have never heard before. I don't know. But he wants us. He wants to be in relationship with us. We have to receive that through the forgiveness of sins and receive him as Lord and Savior. Believing what he did for us on the cross. He died for all of us. He he raised himself from the dead. God brought him up from the dead. He sits on the throne in heaven and he's gonna come back someday. Amen. 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 That's... That's the, that's, the, that's the ground level foundation, right? And, and for us as believers, if you don't know Jesus, that's the place to start. For us that know Jesus, this world hasn't changed. What's changed is us, not the world. The older you get, the more you realize the world's gotten worse, not better. I, hear, I used to hear that from my grandparents all the time. Now I say it. <laughs> Can't believe it. But it's the reality, right? Right? But what's greater in me than was when I was a kid is Jesus. And I know there's more to go. There's more to grow in me with my relationship with Jesus. So Romans 5, it's gonna come on the screen. Now, don't judge me, but I really like the New Living Translation. I don't know if you do, but I love it. I love it for my devotional life. I love it for my study time. It just speaks to me. God uses this translation. We all have our, y'all have your special ones, right? Could be King James, could be the message, could be a lot of things. This one just gets me. This really spoke to me. God said, this is, this is how it all comes together, right here. The condition of our world, the condition of our life, why we're always seen is like we're crying out for help. There's always change to have happen in us. It never ends. I'd love Jesus, but why can't this stuff go away, right? Are you tracking with me? Okay. 
Romans 5, starting with verse one, it's on the screen. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Jesus died for us. We can have peace knowing in that relationship with Jesus, knowing him. Verse two, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. When Gwen was baptized, it testified to her relationship with Jesus and where she stands. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We get to share in it. We can have confidence in that. All of that's to come. My friends, all of that's to come. And in the meantime, we live here. Verse three, we can rejoice too, also, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Yes. Yes. I know that if I can get through at least 12 sessions at physical therapy, I'm gonna be conditioned <laughs> for the longer haul. I may need more than that, right? Endurance, the pain that comes through trials. And endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. David didn't have the Holy Spirit. David pursued God. He had a deep relationship with God. Like we've, we've We've been given so much as believers. We've been given so much. We've given, we've been given everything we need to build character in our lives, to build endurance in our lives, and to be on the foundation of joy of knowing that Jesus doesn't change our relationship with him. He's always there. What we have to come is to come. And in the meantime, yes, we have to go through what we're going through. Don't be afraid to cry out for help. Get there quickly, meaning be ready to be authentic. Be ready to be truthful. Be receptive to what God has for you. Sorry. And be obedient. Simple statements, big, big opportunities for us in this world. Why? Because God is developing in you a life of fulfillment in the midst of all these struggles. God wants to prepare you for heaven. For preparation now is about how many people can he use you to take along for the ride. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here, like I said earlier, and you need Jesus. Man, we're gonna pray in a minute. And uh, if that's you, you don't have to be eloquent. You just say, help, God, I need you. You saved me through your son, Jesus, and I receive him. I receive him. I believe in that he died for my sins, and he's with me forever. And your promise of eternity, they're coming out in a minute maybe to play behind me. If they don't, no big deal. (laughs) But for you, if you don't know Jesus, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. For us who know Christ, I get you, man. I know what hard looks like. I know what difficulties look like. I don't know your difficulties, but I know mine. And I know I wouldn't have been able to get through them or even stand here today if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for God providing what I needed, not what I wanted, but what I needed so grateful that God loves me that much and he loves you that much that he will respond to your cries for help. He will show up. You be receptive. You keep looking for him and you gotta be reminded today like I have been that there's a plan. Knowing Jesus, building character, endurance, strength to celebrate my salvation even in the midst of my struggles because I know I've been saved by grace. I couldn't earn it. And I know my struggles are there and I'm gonna keep fighting them and going through them with Jesus' help. Do you see the cycle? It's not a bad cycle. It's the reality of life as a Christ follower in a world that's broken. I'm broken. I need you. I want what you want more than what I want. I know you love me. I need you to show up. 
like David who was scared, who had anxiety, who wasn't sure if he'd live for tomorrow, if the enemy was gonna come take him down, if he had enough to make it through. God, that's me today. And I pray, God, right now for those in front of me as they pray, that's them today. Even if it's for just the one. God, that we would recognize our need for a savior and we would recognize our need for your help. We wouldn't be so prideful and so self-centered and so about us that we wouldn't reach out for help. That help may come in your word. It will come through direction and prayer and, and in relation with you and it will come. God, bring somebody in the life that those in front of me that need help and they need it to show up tangibly. They need it to show up in a way that helps meet them at their point of need. Somebody that can relate, whatever it is, God. And we will give you praise as David, you did in those final five or six Psalms. We'll praise you like to the best of our ability. We'll shout hallelujah, praise the Lord. We'll live a life centered on you with our eyes fixed on you. Father, that's what I pray for my church family today to know you in a greater way, to be in your word, to do those fundamental things that keep us from spiritually deteriorating, that we would experience life in the fullest that you promise. And we pray all this in Christ's name, amen.